So you picked up a wildlife photography. You're interested in it and you want to get better at it. So what are the skills you need to have? In this video, I'm going to share with you what I believe are five most important skills that every wildlife photographer needs to master. If you came to me and asked for only one tip, it would certainly be know your subject. And I don't just mean realize how it looks or how it sounds like. I mean dive deep. Dive into biology, learn the subject behavior, learn when certain behavior happens. Also learn about the breeding habits of the bird, for example, or when do the cheek fletch. So all of that is important. And how do you exactly do it? Well, number one resource is books. Simple books about wildlife or birds. Other great resource is YouTube. Yes, here when you're right now. You just type into the YouTube search bar the behavior you want to see. And you might ask, but how would it help me? Well, before photographing rednecks grips from a floating hide, I did two things. Number one, I asked people who I knew photographed rednecks grips before. Number two, I typed in redneck grip dancing to YouTube. And why? Because I knew the shot that I would want to make is this... I knew that they have the habit of coming up and dancing together as a form of the courtship behavior. I knew I want to take the shot of that. But how? That was the question. I didn't know how to predict that. So by typing that to YouTube, I found the videos of birds actually dancing and what happened before. And I knew when the birds were coming slowly towards each other, that was my time to shine. That was the time to take photos because the action will be about to happen. That's why when I was in a floating hide, I was prepared when one bird came towards the another, I was ready for the action and I got the shot. You can also see a whole behind the scene video of this, of how I took the floating hide pictures here. One of the most important qualities I see when shooting with award-winning wildlife photographers is that they never miss a shot. They never fumble with their settings, never don't know where the certain button on the camera is. So a skill to master here is know your camera flawlessly. You need to know where every button is, what, how many spins does it take to go from the certain aperture to the other and you can't think about it. It needs to be muscle memory. When you pick up the camera you already know what movements to do to get the shot you needed. So for example, you're walking and you had a f5.6 on your lens and suddenly a deer appears in front of you and against a nice backdrop. So you want to come jump to f8. And how do you practice that? Well, it's simple. You pick a certain point in the... You, it can be in your garden, you can place something on a chair and make it as your target. So you pick, you hold the camera, you think in your head what hand, what settings do you want, you pick it up and you have it set in your usual settings. You used to, ha you used to have when you're walking and while doing this, while picking up the camera, you change the settings and when you will be able to get it 10 straight times, I think you're ready to go out in the field and you know your camera perfectly. Also you need to know what's the highest ISO you will go with your camera. For example, for me, for the R5 it's 3200 and for the 1DX Mark II it's 12800 and for the 7D Mark II it was just 800. But uh, you need to know that sometimes when you have a perfect action, for example, of wolf chasing a deer in front of you, then you need and you need the higher shutter speed then you should go up the 10, up the um, ISO scale, over the thing you're comfortable with. Why? Because the technology is evolving. Things like Topaz Denoise, link in bio to get a better deal on Topaz Denoise, get so much better than they used to be. Look at this picture of great tits that I managed to recover after a few years. So don't be scared of shooting high ISOs, but for normal portraits, know what's the highest ISO your camera will go and that you're satisfied with. It's different for every person, of course. A link to tapas below. As we all know, wildlife photography can be a tough hobby. You have to hike long miles with over sometimes 20 kg of gear in your backpack. So you need to be physically fit. 
and it's most under one of the most underrated skills for a wildlife wildlife photographer. You don't need to go to the gym, but you can simply go on a walk once a day, on once every two days. Maybe sometime take your photo backpack with you, because uh, the best photography opportunities are usually not the places that are easily accessible. You have to hike through swamps or mountains to get to the perfect location for your photography. So being fit will help you um, achieving that goal. Also by being fit I mean being physically tough. You have to be able to stand the cold, the snow, the rain, the um, uncomfortable positions that you will lay in waiting for wildlife. I was laying head down on this pond bank for four hours to get the images of the black storks and spotted red shanks. So being physically tough and fit will 100% help you as a wildlife photographer and will allow you to spend more time in the field which all in all is the most important fact because then you learn, then you learn the behavior and without being in a field, you will never get good wildlife photographs. Another skill every wildlife photographer has to master is unfortunately patience. The best images are usually not random. They are planned, they are effect of wildlife photographers spending time with one subject for a long time. You need to know the behavior of the animal and the best way to do that is to spend time with one particular family or one particular animal for a long time because then you know the habits of the certain individual. For example, when I was photographing woodpeckers at their nesting cavity at the local school playground, I sp spent five mornings with them. And during those five mornings, I noticed the behavior that they usually start feeding uh, 15 minutes before sunrise and uh, every five minutes they feed their chicks. So I knew that um, I had to be at the spot 15 minutes before sunrise to the don't disturb the woodpeckers. But while photographing them, I noticed I was taking the normal videos and uh, I was taking a normal video and frontlet shots to get the usual bird flying out of the cavity dynamic image but on the fourth morning I noticed that the sun behind me was creating really nice patterns and then I thought hmm maybe let's go backlit to take a silhouette and guess what on the fifth morning it worked I got the silhouette from repositioning myself. If I hadn't spent the time, I wouldn't have got the shot that I got. So, if you spend time in one place, you usually benefit from it and you usually get the best shot of the opportunity. So, if you have one certain topic that appears in the same place over and over again, you, it might be worth to spend like a week or two months with it. And that's how the best images usually are created. And I saved the most game-changing one for last. Thinking ahead, being able to predict the movement of the animal, being able to predict the light angle, the background, what the animal will do. So, background, light angle, those are easy to predict from your comfy chair. Just go on Google Maps or Google Street View or maybe even uh, apps like Photopills or Photographer's Ephemeris to predict the light angle and the background that you will get. But there is nothing more important as being cold-blooded when you're at your location and you just wait for the animal to appear. And when it suddenly appears, you need to be able to think proactively. Let me demonstrate that for you on an example. Me and my dad and my friend were photographing moose in Biebrze National Park area and we noticed that the female moose moved and it, she was with the calf so I instantly knew that the calf would follow the, her. So I was the only one to back up. I framed the shot that I wanted because I knew when the where a, like plus minus two meters where the female crossed and I knew the calf would follow the exact same path. And uh, I backed up quite a lot because we were shooting portraits and I came back to get the full body with a pine branch coming to the frame and this way 
I was the only one to don't clip the calf when it suddenly moved where we one where I predicted it to move. So be cold blooded, try to always think what might happen next because they usually the best images are the one when the animal is not static, when any, where there is some movement. So be able to predict the movement. And how do you learn that? Well, you spend time in the field, so it all comes down to this. You have to get the experience. You can watch YouTube videos studying the animal behavior. You can read books, but the most important one is certainly just spending time in the field with an animal that you want to photograph or general animals. To sum up, those are what I believe five most important skills every wildlife photographer should have. So I invite you to practice them at home or in the field because you can never be over prepared. You can only be under prepared and we don't want that because that means missing, missing the shots. Thanks for watching.